what this means. Time to put this baby back together. I know it hasn't been really featured on my channel much, but the transmission went out. It had a Turbo 350 203 transfer case, which is a full-time transfer case. Now, I got this bad boy, MP205, with a Turbo 350. The Turbo 350 is being sent off and being rebuilt. This puppy is just going to get some seals. I'll do all the outer seals myself. Change the fluid. I already drained the fluid, but I'll put new fluid in it. Make sure everything else is good. Then this puppy is going to go back together. But for right now, I'm going to get this thing racked up and see what we're dealing with on the bottom side. Well, got her up in the air. Here's what it looks like. Not the prettiest. Probably going to clean the floor up a little bit. Some grease from the U-joints. Everything's just bolted off to the side. I'll hoist them wires up. I'm going to put the trans in. Motor strap so the distributor doesn't get smashed. I had it rebuilt. It doesn't look the prettiest on the outside, but that doesn't matter. He's got everything plugged off like it should be. A new modulator on there and new torque converter and everything. So I'm going to swap it over onto the transmission jack. Get it over there. See what I got to do to get it in there. I might take and pull the old headers out now as long as there's no transmission in my way and then i can put the transmission in with a little more ease and put the headers in last although my headers are holding quite a bit right now quite a bit of stuff up so i might just put the transmission in and then do the headers later i think that's what i'm gonna do um once i get the transmission in i gotta get it get the cross member in and then go from there see what i'm gonna do how i'm gonna put the transfer case in and i gotta put the seals in that one yet so i got a lot of work ahead of me so quit the talk and i'm gonna get the transmission on the jack get it over there and see what we gotta do So we got the transmission in um, and then while we were looking at this uh, I looked at it and the cross member bolts actually have to come in from the bottom so I had dad help me and we pried the bottom of the cab to slide the bolts in from the top down um, and then I had to remove an exhaust a factory exhaust shield which is out in the scrap now um, that was kind of a pain but then we were talking about how we're gonna put this in here because um, Right now, there's nothing holding the back, the transfer case or the transmission, and nothing supporting that. So we were just kind of deciding how we're going to go about this. What I think is what I'm going to do is I'm going to reseal this, obviously, before I put it in. But then I'll bolt it up to the transmission here, slide this through the, the floor, and then bolt the cross member up and set the whole works on the cross member. I got this supported with the trans or with the uh, screw jack, and then I'll have the transfer case supported with the transmission jack. So it shouldn't be too bad but I think that's what I'm gonna do. With the time limitations I'm facing trying to get this thing going, I've decided I'm not gonna do any of the seals only because these main seals are the ones that typically leak and they're the easiest to get to. So if I got to replace them, it's not that big of a deal. Um, the truck is, isn't perfect anyway if it leaks for a couple miles before I get the chance to change it. So right now I'm going to attempt to put this on the transmission jack. I don't know how well this is going to go. In an attempt to put it in a truck. So this might be quite interesting. But I thought I I would change this seal as long as that's the easiest one to change, just real quick. Boop, boop, done. So I'm gonna get some stuff figured out here, and you guys are probably gonna watch me drop this thing. I hope not to, but it just might happen. I don't know.
so I kind of jumped ahead here a little bit. Um, kind of fight to get the cross member to line up, but I'm now realizing that my lift arm is in the way right there. So I'm probably going to very, very unsafely get it to move over before without lowering the truck because I can't lower the truck. So I don't know how I'm going to do that, but I'll figure it out. Other than that, it didn't go too bad. Got the transfer case, the transmissions in, transfer cases in. Um, once I get it so it can sit under its own weight, I'll take the ratchet strap off. Once I take the ratchet strap off, then I can do the torque converter bolts um, and then put everything back together. So I just got to remember that I got to put six quarts in it before I start it up. That's what the transmission builder told me. So that's what I'm going to do. I see my drive shaft ain't going to be right either. That's going to be not right. But I got that one right there. That one should be right. And in the front drive shaft, that looks like that'll be right. So then I can use my other one. I don't know where my other one is. Front drive shaft doesn't turn as much as the back, obviously. So as long as the U-joints in the back are okay, we will be A-okay. -A and I see now, I'm gonna have to do new U-joints in the back, on the back one, because that one's missing a cap. Oh well, I'll get it figured out, but um, I might run home and do lunch now, eat some lunch, so then I can jump back on this. Um, I don't know what I wanna do with the lift arm, but that's the next step is to bolt the cross member up to the frame. Once the cross member is bolted to the frame, then I can lower the whole drive train on the cross member, and then I can take that strap off. So let's see if we can find a way to move that lift arm and get that stuff lowered on the frame before I head to lunch. All right, I got the cross member in. I have the upper bolts semi-tight, uh, tight enough to hold the whole works up. And then I let it down on the cross member and I tighten these up. So when I get back from lunch, I'll tighten the bottom ones up and tighten all of them up, double check them. Then I will work on the side of the transmission here, do the lines, the dipstick tube, the kick down cable, the modulator line. And then after that, I'm gonna take the spark plugs out, get the headers out, um, get the new headers in. Once the new headers are in, obviously I'll bolt up the exhaust. Gotta get the new rear drive shaft in, new to me, I guess you can say, but I need U-joints for that. So if I get that far, I'll have to run to town, about a 30 minute drive one way. So I don't know how that's gonna go. And it needs a carburetor, but I have the carburetor I can use. I can use this carburetor off the orange truck. Um, so that'll be okay but yeah that's what i need to get her going so there's very good possibility if the rest of this goes smooth after lunchtime i can uh, get this thing on the road so you might see this thing move today but other than that i'm gonna go eat lunch and then get to tightening all these bolts up and assembling the stuff on the side of the transmission let's get to it turned out pretty good so far Converter bolts are a very commonly overlooked thing in a project. Um, so I figured I'd talk about it real quick. So, first of all, as you may have seen when I in a time lapse video, this was a, uh, about 316 of an inch away from the fly 
flywheel or flex plate or whatever you want to call it. Uh, people call it different things from different places. And then as I was tightening it, it pulled it tight. Well, that's good. That's what you want. You want it to be like that because on the back of a torque converter, there's two slots in it on the opposite end of the tube, right? You got a round tube and on two, two opposite ends, there's two slots. Those slots have to fit inside the pump in the transmission. So you gotta make sure those are all the way in there. And in order to know if it's all the way in there, there should be one, two, and sometimes even three clunks when you're turning the transmission in, or the torque converter in, and it'll go back one, two, or three times. And then once you get it in, if it's about a 3 16 of an inch away from the flex plate, you know you're golden. But as you've seen, I tighten this, but I didn't tighten this all the way. I just snugged it up. I'm gonna do all three of them, and then I'm gonna go in the reverse order that I installed them and finish tighten them. You don't have to do that. A lot of guys are like, oh, you can just tighten it up. But just as a personal preference to myself, that's what I do. But yes, you want it about a 3 16 of an inch away and it is perfectly normal if you have to slide the torque converter out a little bit to connect it to the flywheel. Now, if there's too much of a gap here and you know it's in the pump for sure, then you could get a really highly, a highly precise machined washers. Um, there's all kinds of other things you could do out there and there's a lot of forms on that on the internet as well. But I just thought I would touch on that a little bit because I know it's a highly overlooked step sometimes. Let's finish this up and then we can get these headers out of here and get the new ones in. back up here on the top and man oh man it's been a while since I've been up here look at the cobwebs so I'm gonna take and pull the spark plug wires off I'm not gonna pull the holders off or anything like that I'll have to work around them and then I'm going to uh, get the spark plugs out and then we'll get these headers out of here so yeah it's gonna be fun but oh well those new headers are gonna look so much nicer in here anyway Let's get to it. Getting closer to starting this thing up. Oh, and I remembered it's gonna take me forever, forever to fill uh, transmission fluid in this thing. Those fancy dipstick tubes, they're nice because they, they're a lot better than the factory ones when the factory ones start to leak, but man, is the fill hole so small, it's not even funny. But it is what it is. We'll make her happen. So I almost got this header off. I'm just waiting for someone to come and help me take the header off and put the new one on. But for now, I'm going to put the carburetor on while I'm waiting. That should be simple enough. So I'm going to put the carburetor on and... Again, while I'm waiting is what I'm gonna do this time is uh, take and dremel out these holes I'm gonna do every single one of them just to touch them up a little bit um, these are again the stainless steel eBay headers I have them on that truck and I had the chromatic coated ones or ceramic coated ones I mean on this truck but they didn't hold up um, they started to leak so I feel like the stainless steel ones would be better I think that's why they switched to stainless steel because this is the same brand and everything but 
um, they're really nice on that truck I really like them compared to the ones I put on the brown truck originally so got another set here gonna dremel out the holes that's the only issue with them and then I'm going to get them ready to go in the truck so let's get to it now for the last two hours I've been working on both of these headers I've been drilling out the holes oblonging them um, and they still wouldn't bolt up I'm like oh my goodness this is getting worse the first cheap pair, we only had to drill out one hole. The second cheap pair, we had to drill out a few more. Now this last pair, I drilled them all out four sizes bigger. But the key was right here. I had to make a relief cut. Now I don't know what that's gonna cost later on in the future, but they bolted right up then. So I'm gonna take the gasket now. I got one the passenger side header stuck in here already. So I'm gonna take it, slide the gasket in. Put a few bolts in bolt it up and i don't know see what happens i'll do that with the other one and take my chances if they leak if they cause problems later on screw it i'll just spend the money on a good set of headers but for now let me get this one bolted up and i'll come back to you guys and tell you how it fit and stuff like that i'm going to be cutting to the chase a little bit more with this one because this video i'm sure is going to be a long video already and i can tell you right now I'm not going to get it going tonight. It got really late on me with doing these headers. So there will be a part two to this um, transmission transfer case swap. But it ain't going to be uh, much more than two part series. If not, maybe a three for some reason. But other than that, I'm going to get to putting this header in. I'm going to get the other one out. Get both of these headers in and uh, see where I'm at for tonight. And see how late it gets on me. Well, the night got short very quick, but this header is bolted up. I'm not even going to throw the spark plugs in or anything like that. I'm calling our quits for tonight. Um, yeah, those relief cuts definitely did make a difference. This one, not so much. It doesn't look like it, but um, as you can see, it doesn't take... I'm doing this one-handed like this. It doesn't take much, but... So... That's good. Good to know. I guess I can use those so I don't, I'm not at a total loss. But other than that, that's going to be a wrap. The brown truck is back. It's not back in action, but it is back. So transmission's in, transfer case is in, cross members in, transmission's all hooked up and everything like it should be. One header is in, carburetor is on. So all we got left to do is the other header the spark plugs and stuff like that fluids and then the drive shaft so real close real close hopefully i can get that all done in the next video i'm gonna pick up a u-joint tomorrow um so i should be looking pretty good but thanks for watching i hope you guys enjoyed like comment tell me how i'm doing and if you're not already subscribed please subscribe i post a lot of content um Someday we'll get, be getting back to that one. And then the LS truck, uh, once one of these lifts free up, the LS truck cam swap will be starting on that project. So there's plenty more to come. But thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.